Hello everyone, on this episode I'm going to be talking about the miniseries Centennial. This year I have been doing a lot of early American history stuff, like I've been reading books and I even went on the Lewis and Clark expedition for my vacation this year and yeah, you know, I've been playing the Oregon Trail, just lots of stuff like that. I've been kind of in a frontier mountain man kind of mood and I just stumbled across this show for sale on Amazon for like $13. So I was like, eh, I'll check it out. The show is from 1978. I think it ran from October 1978 to February 79. So it's kind of old, but I was hopeful. And God, I am so glad I watched this show. It was fabulous. Absolutely what I needed. It's perfect for me because probably about a third of the show takes place down the frontier and mountain man days and all of that and it's just amazing i loved it absolutely loved it um it's called a mini series which was kind of a new thing in the 70s but <laughs> it's kind of kind of crazy to be called a mini series that's why whenever i talk about it i always say quote unquote mini series because it's 26 hours long i mean jesus christ this thing was long but i loved it I mean, that's like, what, two and a half seasons of Game of Thrones? But yeah, it was really fabulous. Um, basically, the show is about a certain part of Colorado. So the show starts off like 100 million years ago with lava and mountains forming, you know, the Rockies forming and all of that. And it goes from there to basically when the Native Americans show up. And I think the show really gets going probably... Around 1750, like mid-1700s with the Arapaho tribe. And uh, basically, that's when the fur trappers start coming in, the mountain men start coming in, things start changing a bit. And then we get the frontier, then the United States government starts making treaties with the natives, and then we get the Wild West, and then we pretty much get into the 20th century, you know, World War One and... The series ends in modern day, which, you know, the show was shown in 1978. So 1978 is modern day for the show. But um, yeah, so it basically just shows that part of the country over the span of 230 years or so. So it's very fascinating just seeing how much changes over the decades. Like not just the characters and the people, but the land, you know, it starts... I mean, we literally go from hunter-gatherer Native Americans to massive factories and pickup trucks and all of that. And, I mean, I know 1978 was almost 50 years ago, but other than the internet and smartphones, it's not really that different. I mean, you still got to go to the grocery store, got to pump gas in your car. I mean, it's really not that different. So, to see it go from hunter-gatherers to basically now was very fascinating and so yeah the show basically revolves around this patch of land in what would be Colorado so it's very interesting to seeing seeing all the change that happens not just with the land but with the people in it I mean we get to spend hours and hours with all of these characters so when they get old and die off I mean it really feels like you're losing a friend and, I mean, that's definitely the best part of the show is the characters and the actors. This show has, I think, some of the best characters in TV history. We start off with French fur trapper Pascanel, who's from Quebec. So he's a Frenchman played by Robert Conrad. And Robert Conrad actually said in interviews that this is his favorite character he ever played. And, yeah, he's just a, you know, little Frenchman. Trying to be an entrepreneur, just coming down the river, trying to trade with the Native Americans for furs. And then he paddles all the way back thousands of miles to St. Louis, or St. Louis, as it was called back then, to make some money. And yeah, he's just living life, absolutely doing his thing. And he's a great character. We don't really know much about him. I mean, there's all these rumors. Oh, he's got a wife in Montreal. He's got a wife he left in New Orleans. And... You know, he's, he's kind of a mystery, but he's a very, very tough and cool character. And he befriends a Scotsman played by Richard Chamberlain, Alexander McKeague. 
And he's another great character. I really loved Alexander McKeague. I guess you could kind of say Pascanel's maybe more of the alpha male and McKeague is kind of a beta male. But, I mean, McKeague's a badass. I mean, he's out here being a mountain man for a good bit of the series. So he's just a little more sensitive than Pascanel. Pascanel's just like, you know, a force of nature almost. Just a man driven to be more than what he is, you know. And McKeague just wants a good woman. He wants a family. He wants to live. He wants to be happy. Just, yeah. So the two of those characters form a very interesting friendship and have a very interesting dynamic. And in the middle of this, they have the Arapaho Indians and the Pawnee and all of that. So, yeah, definitely the first third of the series deals with these guys. And that's definitely my favorite part. I mean, it's the part that I'm most interested in seeing. Because if you think about it, there's not really that many Mountain Man or Frontier movies or shows. Like, I mean, of course, you got Jeremiah Johnson, classic. Uh, you got The Mountain Men with Charlton Heston. You know, that's pretty okay. But other than that, there's not really a lot. I mean, How the West is won or How the West was won shows a little bit of that with Jimmy Stewart. So it's pretty rare to see. And the show, or I guess the characters, do a good job of showing how they live. Like they show you how to trap beaver and you might actually learn a thing or two on how these guys made a living out there. And yeah, I mean, it's just great drama, very interesting. I mean, they both end up loving the same woman, a Arapaho woman named Clay Basket. And, you know, she gives birth to Pascanel's sons who go on to be warriors and, you know, half breed, as they would call them, warriors and stuff. And just, that's a cool thing, too, because basically the series doesn't just cover that land, it covers the bloodline or the family tree. So basically, we go from the frontier mountain man era to basically all the immigrants coming in. Because basically the next generation after McKeague and Pascanel are immigrants, you know, the Oregon Trail. So people from east are coming west now. A lot of British people. Um, the next main character, I guess you could say, is Levi Zent, who's a Mennonite. So he's basically an Amish immigrant living in Pennsylvania. He comes west after being shunned by his fellow Mennonites and stuff. And so he's trying to carve a life out here in Colorado and just yeah I mean I was kind of like yeah I really like Pascanel and McKeague though I don't know if I want new characters but Zant ends up doing pretty good and McKeague is around for a while yeah and that's the thing too the difference in uh, deaths that Pascanel and McKeague have are very telling to their characters very uh, I guess appropriate in a way but uh yeah, I mean, it really, really hits hard when a character in this show dies because, I mean, you really feel like you've known them forever because, I mean, the show jumps. I mean, we literally go from, like, Pascanel showing up in Colorado in 1795 to now we're in, like, the 1730s and 1740s. We got the Oregon Trail going and all these people are coming. All these uh, sons and daughters of Pascanel, McKeague, and all of them interacting with these immigrants and marrying them and having children. So the bloodline literally goes from Pascanel all the way to modern day 1978. So that's really cool seeing all these characters interact and stuff. And then after the Oregon Trail, we kind of get the um, American Indians and their dealings with the American government and all of that. We get massacres, we get broken treaties, we get all kinds of stuff. And then we go basically to the Wild West and the cattle drives and stuff. And I'm kind of like, eh. I mean, the show definitely goes downhill in enjoyability for me. But it never gets bad, never really gets boring or anything. It's just, I really like the first part of the series. Pascanel, McKeague, and the Frontier and all that. I mean, when you go to the Wild West and the cattle drives, I'm like, how many times have you seen you know, a Wild West movie or a cattle drive. I mean, hell, even in comedies like uh, City Slickers, like that's basically a two-hour cattle drive. Or I think another good miniseries to watch after watching this one is Lonesome Dove. And that's basically like, what, a four, six-hour cattle drive? I mean, it's, yeah. It's like, okay, I've seen this, you know. 
And then from there, we get into the 20th century and just all of that. And, you know, along the way, there's so many great actors and performances. And if you grew up watching movies from the 70s or the 80s, I mean, you're going to know so many of these actors like Raymond Burr's in it. Uh, Richard Crenna's in it. Timothy Dalton is in it. Andy Griffith shows up. Mark Harmon. I mean, a lot of great character actors like Brian Keith. He plays a sheriff in the late 1800s who's really really good at his job and a really cool character and you know there's a lot going on i mean we got murder mysteries we got whore daughters you know kind of kind of ruining the family name and stuff i mean we got just all kinds of very interesting family dilemmas and dynamics and the changing times especially like in the when we get to like the 1930s we got a lot of mexican immigrants coming in and it shows all the shit they were having to deal with, with, you know, being treated right and having workers' rights and all of that stuff. So, you know, it's very interesting. And then we get to the modern day and it's just like the show basically becomes about preserving nature, you know, the conservation movement and all of that. So very interesting stuff. And it really shows you how far things have come and how much has changed. Like, I mean, if we were immortals to go back, well, anywhere in the world, go back to like 1750 all the way to now, I mean, it'd be astounding. Like, imagine London in 1750 to now, like Jesus. Yeah, it would be (laughs) monumentally different than just all the things that happened there. And even in the Old West, in Colorado, a town named Centennial, you know, just how much has changed and everything. So yeah, it's a really, really great miniseries. I know, like I said, it kind of eh, kind of goes downhill a little bit in interest for me and in entertainment, but really it's it's all the way through. It's worth watching, and it's very good. Very good. I can't wait to have my fiance watch it. She's going to be very interested in it. And it's just really good filmmaking, really good storytelling, really good everything. And I mean, it's the story of us, where we come from, you know? I mean, I can't really trace my family tree back that far, maybe like 1860s maybe, but after that, who knows, you know? So it's very interesting to think, you know, was I created from a French-Canadian fur trapper in the 1700s? Like, you know, what's the story of my ancestry? What's the story of my nation's history? You know, what's the story of what made us us and this show does a really good job of showing that and really gets you thinking like wow we really have come a long way and things have changed but it's very interesting very interesting and the miniseries is based on a book James uh, McNair I believe was the author and uh, I'm kind of curious to read it but it's like 900 pages which explains why this miniseries quote-unquote is 26 hours long So, yeah, 900 pages. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to check out the show, definitely check it out. Like I said, it's on Amazon, like $13. I wouldn't be surprised if it's on YouTube. So, yeah, definitely check it out, especially if you're into the American frontier and all of that. So, it's a really great show. And it's really cool, too, because they filmed it in a lot of the real places. Like, I was noticing right away, like, oh, there's Grand Teton National Park and, you know, Rocky Mountain National Park and all of that. So, and the actors were really going through it. Like, if it was freezing, you know, snow and all that, the actors were really in the snow. Like, they wouldn't make the series like they did back then nowadays. So, and a lot of the actors, they love this. They love this. Like I said, Robert Conrad said this was his favorite performance. You know, Pascanel was his favorite character to play. And uh, I think Richard Chamberlain said McKeague was one of his favorite characters. And just, yeah, everybody really loved working on this, even though it was difficult because of the weather, the terrain, you know, all of that and the elements and everything. But they really loved it. So if you want to check this show out, definitely check it out. 